Before we start learning how matrix transpose is done in C language, let us know its actual importance in real life. In the field of computer vision and image processing, we know that images or pictures are represented using pixels. Pixels are represented in two-dimensional format. To rotate a picture from left to right or particularly 90 degrees or 180 degrees, internally matrix transposing is done. And also in many computer games, matrix transpose technique is used. That is the reason why we need to learn this, how this can be done using C language. Transposing is nothing but exchanging rows and columns. 2 cross 3 matrix will become 3 cross 2 matrix. To demonstrate this, I have taken an array of 5 cross 5 and I am asking user to enter number of rows and number of columns. Imagine that a user has entered 3 cross 2 matrix. The matrix is 3 cross 2. 3 rows and 2 columns. After conversion, this matrix becomes 2 cross 3. Whenever we are converting rows to columns or columns to rows, make sure that enough space is available. That is the reason why I have taken an array of 5 cross 5. So even after conversion of 3 cross 2, I will get 2 cross 3. I can freely accommodate in an array of 5 cross 5. To do this transpose, initially we need to find out maximum of number of rows and number of columns. Out of these two, whichever the maximum value is there, that value I am storing in a variable called as max. This max value is used in looping. We require two loops which are nested within each other. This is the parent loop i starts from 0 and it runs up to maximum number of times. That means max value number of times. And this is the chain loop which starts from i value with respect to this i value and runs up to max number of times. Let's do it line by line execution now. Initially i is 0. Since it is 3 cross 2 and max value is 3, 0 is less than 3, condition is true. Whenever the condition is true, we'll get inside and uh, we'll execute the j loop. Now j is 0. I'll maintain i value and j values here. i is 0, 0 and j is, since i is 0, j always starts with respective i value, j is 0. 0 is less than 3, condition is true. Whenever the condition is true, I will get inside and I will exchange these two values. The value that is there at a of i j, I am exchanging with the value of a of j i. In other words, I will swap these two values. By doing so, we can achieve transposing. The column value goes to row value and row value comes to the column value. Let's do it. Since i is 0 and j is 0, a of 0, 0 is swapped by itself. So 15 got swapped with 15. There's no problem whenever the i value and j value are same. So swapping takes place by itself. j increments to 1. 1 is less than 3. Condition is true. When condition is true, the position is a of ij. ij means this one. The index positions I am writing here. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, this is 4. And the index position towards columns 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now i is 0, j is 1 and the element is 2. That means 0, 1 the location, I have element 2. I need to exchange this value with e of j i j is 1 and i is 0. So the element whatever that is there at 1, 0 I need to exchange. Since we are doing this activity without using an additional array, achieving this thing using additional array is quite easy but very expensive in terms of memory. That is why it is very important to perform this job within the array itself. Without using any additional memory or additional array, we are going to finish this job by exchanging the values within the array by using this simple intelligent logic. The value at 0, 1 that means 2 has to be swapped with the value at 1, 0. So 2 comes here and 7 comes here. And then j is incremented to 2. 2 is less than 3. Condition is true. Now the value at a of ij is exchanged with a of j i. 
So now we are at this place. I is 0 and J is 2. 0, 2. At 0, 2 we have nothing. That means it's an empty location. We have nothing. 0, 2 has to be swapped with 2, 0. At 2, 0 we have 9. So in place of this, this will get an empty location and 9 goes here. 9 goes here and at 0, 2 there was an empty location so it becomes empty location. now. Empty means empty. There is nothing. And then j is incremented to 3. 3 is not less than 3 condition fails. So we will get back to i. Now i become 1. When i is 1, j becomes 1. Because j is always initialized with i value. So since i is 1, now j became 1. 1 is less than 3 condition is true. Now I will execute the statement e of i j has to be swapped with e of j i. So i is 1, j is 1. So the value is 8. 8 is swapped be by itself. Because the i value and j value are same. Now j is incremented to 2. 2 is less than 3 condition is true. Get inside and the same statement will take place. e of 1, 2, the value at 1, 2. 1, 2 means there is nothing. Has to be swapped with 2, 1. At 2, 1 we have 11. 11 comes here and nothing comes here. That means empty. And thereafter j becomes 3. 3 is not less than 3. Condition fails. When condition fails, we will get back to i and i becomes 2. When i becomes 2, j freshly initializes with 2 because j is always initialized with corresponding i value. j in the j loop, since 2 value is less than 3, we will get inside and we will swap these two values. e of i j. A of 2, 2. That means this value, the nothing value is swapped by nothing. And then j is incremented to 3. 3 is not less than 3 condition fails. And then we will get back to i. i is incremented to 3. 3 is not less than 3 condition fails. And afterwards, we will come out of the i loop. And after coming out of i loop, if we look at this array, then our array is already transposed. The matrix got transposed. Rows became columns and column became rows. While printing the resultant matrix, the number of rows now it is number of columns. Number of columns is now number of rows. Based on that, if we try to print the matrix, then our job is done. Since there are two loops which are nested, the total timing complexity to finish this job is order of n square, where n is the maximum of number of rows and number of columns. In other words, we can also say n as the dimension of the matrix. Now let's write the program. Let the file name be transpose.c. Let's write program now. I'll be taking an array of a of 10, 10. Basically, I am taking 10 cross 10 matrix, but out of which I will be asking user to enter the number of rows and number of columns. ij for looping. For swapping purpose, I will be using a variable called as temp. And to store the maximum of rows and columns, I will be taking a variable called as max. I will be asking user to enter, enter number of rows and columns. The value that, uh, that is entered by the user that means the number of rows and number of columns, I will store in rows and uh, in the variable R and C respectively. The number of rows will be stored in R and number of columns will be stored in C. Once after getting this R and C value, immediately I will find out the maximum of R and C using a ternary operator. If R is greater than C, then I will return R, otherwise I will return C. Based on the maximum of R, C, the value will be kept in max. Because the max variable is very important for the entire logic. I will ask user to enter the values in matrix. Upon seeing this, user will try to enter the values. So let me store these values based on R and C values. Value for each row and for each column within the row for each column. 
I'll be storing the values. So basically, it's a row major order. It means that values we are going to fill row wise. The first after filling the first row, we'll be filling the second row. That's all. We are done by taking the input. Now we got input values into the array A. Once after we got the values, now it's time to apply our logic to transpose the matrix. But it is very important for any programmer to display the matrix how it looks like before transposing. So let me print the matrix before transposing how the matrix looks like. I wanted to display it. To display that, I'll be using the same loop, simply copy paste it. Instead of scanf, we'll be having printf statement and remove this percentile. So since uh, we are going to print the things, so let me have a slash n to have a line break for every row. And let me give n of space. So I'm just beautifying my matrix. I wanted to see the matrix as a table of format. I've given n of space here for each row. I have, I have added a new line character. Once after printing the matrix, now it's time to apply the entire logic. Our logic is quite straightforward. For i equals to 0, i less than max, i plus plus. Whenever the condition is true, get inside. j equals to i, j less than max, j plus plus get inside. Whenever this condition is true, we are going to swap the locations of a of ij with a of ij and j i, a of j i. Values are getting swapped. To do that, I'll take the help of temp. In temp, I'll keep a of ij value and then I'll update a of ij value with a of j i value and at the end, a of j i gets the value of temp in which I have already stored the value of a of i j. So this is how we change the values. This loop will run for, for each value of i, j will be iterated. So when condition fails, will come out. After coming out, it is our responsibility to display the output to the user. So this will basically to transpose, this is the main logic. It's a simple logic. Since we are running two loops which are nested, which are running for the maximum times, max into max, that means max square. In case, if I consider the dimension as n, the total timing complexity is order of n square. In order to print the output after transposing, I'll be simply copying the same code that is used here to print the matrix before transposing. So here, uh, this loop is not properly open and closed. Let me do that. So let me do that. I is open properly, J is open properly and J is closed and I is closed. Now it is perfect. Let me copy this piece of code which can be reused for printing the matrix after transposing. After transposing, I have to print the matrix. But the biggest change that you need to do in the existing loop is that after transposing, your rows became columns and columns became rows. So make sure that you are, instead of using rows, you have to use the value C and instead of using C, you have to use value R. Because after transposing, columns and rows are exchanged. Let me close the program. Save the program. Let's compile our program GCC transpose.c. No compile time errors. Let us execute the program. Dot slash a dot out. It's asking me to enter number of rows and columns. Remember that we have already created an array of 10 cross 10. Within the range of 10 rows and 10 columns, I can opt for any number of rows and columns. Here I'm opting for 3 rows and 2 columns. It means that I have to enter 6 values. I'm entering the following values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So before transposing, the values and the array look like this one. 3 rows and 2 columns. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6. 
after transposing you know that rows becomes columns and columns becomes rows the first row one two became the first column one two the second row three four became the second column three four the third row five six became the third column five six so this is how the transposing can be done without using any additional array by saving lots of space transposing is the one which is most widely used in the field of computer vision and image processing in real time this operation is quite expensive whenever we are working with larger images or larger video files so that's why it's very important to finish this job without any kind of additional matrix that's it we are done